This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1411, an excerpt from the book, Master Your Code, The Art, Wisdom, and Science of Leading an Extraordinary Life by Darren J. Gold, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Tuesday, welcome back to Optimal Living Daily or the OLD podcast, where I read to you from some of the best blogs I can find and get permission from covering self-help, minimalism, productivity, anything that I think is worth your time, sometimes book excerpts too, like today. Before we get to it, hiring, can be a slow process. But Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskowitz, found a director of coffee in just a few days. How? ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And now our listeners can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I'll tell you more about today's author right after the reading. So for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book, Master Your Code, The Art, Wisdom, and Science of Leading an Extraordinary Life by Darren J. Gold. One of my favorite stories that I like to tell, particularly when I'm encouraging leaders to notice and question their beliefs, is the story of Roger Bannister, the man famous for breaking the imaginary four-minute mile barrier. For centuries, runners had been attempting to run the mile in under four minutes. In the 1950s, the quest to break the barrier took on renewed importance, and a number of famous runners publicly and unsuccessfully attempted the feat. Many of the newspapers of the day began to question whether humans would ever be able to run a sub four minute mile. Then in 1954, Bannister broke through the imaginary barrier running the mile in three minutes and 59.4 seconds. An amazing feat for sure. But here's what's really interesting. It was only 46 days later that another runner broke Bannister's record. The following year, two new runners broke the four minute mark in the same race. Dozens followed, and as of this writing, more than 1,400 runners have accomplished the feat, including one runner who ran two miles in less than eight minutes. Nothing material changed with respect to human anatomy, track conditions, weather patterns, running shoes, or the human diet between the start of Bannister's race and the few years that followed. What then explains the sudden and dramatic explosion of athletic achievement? The only thing possible is the constraining power of the myth that man could not run the mile in less than four minutes. What Bannister had done was not just break the four minute mile barrier, he shattered the myth that created the barrier in the first place. The paradigm had offered a limited set of actions available for runners to take. With that paradigm no longer in place, a whole new set of actions became available. Runners were literally free to run through that invented boundary. Imagine, if you will, that a runner came along and ran a sub three minute mile. Impossible, right? Yet all of a sudden, the actions runners would take that they could now see as even available to take would shift immediately. Training regimens, diets, running styles would all be examined, reconsidered, and tinkered with. All of this would happen because a new paradigm had replaced an old one that had locked runners into conventional ways of running. Runners would literally now be running in a new world. Kuhn captures this perfectly in writing about scientific revolutions. Quote, when paradigms change, the world itself changes with them. Led by a new paradigm, scientists adopt new instruments and look in new places. Even more important, during revolutions, scientists see new and different things when looking with familiar instruments in places they have looked before. It is rather as if the professional community had been suddenly transported to another planet where familiar objects are seen in a different light and are joined by unfamiliar ones as well. Of course, nothing of quite that sort does occur. There is no geographical transplantation. Outside the laboratory, everyday affairs usually continue as before. Nevertheless, paradigm changes do cause scientists to see the world of their research engagement differently. Insofar as their only recourse to that world is through what they see and do, we may want to say that after a revolution, scientists are responding to a different world, end quote. What does it take for a paradigm to shift, for individuals to be metaphorically transplanted to a new world? According to Kuhn, paradigms only shift when there is a crisis, when the problems with the current paradigm are significant enough that the exploration of alternative paradigms is seen as critical. Quote, so long as the tools a paradigm supplies continue to prove capable of solving the problems it defines, science moves fastest and penetrates most deeply through confident employment of those tools. The reason is clear. As in manufacture, so in science. Retooling is an extravagance to be reserved for the occasion that demands it. 
The significance of crises is the indication they provide that an occasion for retooling has arrived, end quote. I'd like to offer an additional explanation. For me, paradigms shift and myths are shattered only when there's a fish with the wisdom to notice and ask about the water. Someone with enough courage and maturity to question conventions and see the paradigm itself. I believe that the great explorers, inventors, scientists, leaders, and thinkers have each had such qualities. They've intuitively been able to understand the constraining nature of the paradigm and have had the courage to question the particular paradigms and myths of their times. You have the opportunity and, dare I say, responsibility to cultivate your awareness so that you can see and question the paradigms within your own program and environment. You do not need to be a great thinker to do this, although you may very well be. You can do this as a parent, as a colleague, as a member of a team, as a leader of an organization in any area of your life. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, Master Your Code, The Art, Wisdom, and Science of Leading an Extraordinary Life by Darren J. Gold. Thank you again to ZipRecruiter. Hiring can be a slow process. Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskowitz, needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company, but he was having trouble finding qualified applicants, so he switched to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's technology finds people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter and was impressed by how quickly he had qualified candidates apply. And in just a few days, he found his new director of coffee. With results like that, it's no wonder four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at our web address, ziprecruiter.com slash old. That's ziprecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And come by DarrenJGold.com to learn more and to check out his book. I have that linked in this episode's description. Darren is one of the world's leading executive coaches and advisors to CEOs and leadership teams of many of the most well-known organizations. He trained as a lawyer, was a partner at two San Francisco investment firms and served as the CEO of two companies. And the book Master Your Code has been highly reviewed by many CEOs of massive companies Again, you can find more at darrenjgold.com. I'll leave it at that. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for being here and listening to me and for subscribing to the show. And I'll be back tomorrow reading to you. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.